Hey everybody, my name's Monsol, and today I want to talk about a topic near and dear to my heart. Psychedelics and hunting. And more importantly, how these two go really well together from an ancestral perspective. And if you wait till the end, I'm going to share with you one major caution. Now at face value, it might seem like psychedelics and hunting are an odd combination or that they don't go very well together. But according to Plants of the Gods by Albert Hoffman and Richard Schultes, every single indigenous culture across the planet, including the Inuit, used some type of plant or mushroom in order to alter their state of consciousness and connect with the spirit of animals and beings around them. Now, of course, Every indigenous culture hunted for their survival, so it was an integral part of their entire worldview and culture. And it's not far-fetched to consider that they utilized these psychedelics in addition to hunting at the same time. And in this video, I'm gonna break down both anecdotal, the scientific, and the theoretical evidence for why these two go together in a historical context. So first, I'm going to start with the scientific. A 2015 study in the Journal of Ethnopharmacology found that Quechua people, who are located traditionally in Ecuador and Peru, used 22 plant species for increasing the hunting capability of their dogs. Now the study even acknowledges that even though it sounds far-fetched to give mind-altering substances to their dogs, it actually helped them hunt more effectively. Now of course, we're not dogs, but it stands to reason that these mammals, dogs, and humans probably have a lot of similarities. And in fact, just the idea that the Quechua people would know which plants to give their dogs to enhance their hunting capability is pretty indicative of what we would have done as humans all over the world. Now I bring this up because some people might believe that taking any kind of mind-altering substance before hunting is unethical. And I understand where they would be coming from because the standard uh, mind-altering substance in America these days is alcohol. And there's plenty of evidence to suggest that alcohol as a depressant actually hinders motor function and things of that nature. So whereas it is not a good idea to utilize alcohol while hunting, many of these substances like psilocybin, ayahuasca, etc., and more that I'll describe later in the video are great tools for enhancing perception and capabilities in nature. So the theoretical evidence is Terence McKenna's stoned ape theory. Although stoned ape theory is not something that has actually been proven and I'm undecided on how exactly it fits within our human evolutionary context, it is interesting that McKenna believed the way in which human beings became homo sapiens, as intelligent as we are, is through the human following of ungulate herds that we hunted, these are large cow-like species, that we were able to derive psilocybin mushrooms. And from taking these mushrooms, these uh, psychedelic substances, we expanded our consciousness and that catalyzed the evolution into the humans that exist today. Now, whether or not that's true, I don't know, like I said, but in his theory, we utilized psychedelics while hunting, and not only did that help us with the hunt with visual acuity, but it actually may have led us to become humans in the first place. Now I'd like to talk about the anecdotal evidence because I have spent time in South America with many different tribes, the Shipibo, others that are in the jungle. And in the jungle, there are relatively intact indigenous cultures that still utilize many of the plant, animal, fungal medicines that they have for hundreds if not thousands of years. And I'm gonna relay a few of them that I have tried that can be helpful for hunting in particular. Number one is combo, and this is a toxic frog secretion that is used through the bloodstream. It is a 
very intense experience, but once this ordeal, once the chaos of combo wears off, there is a heightened uh, view from your senses, uh, smells, everything is heightened. And this is one of the reasons why people in the jungle will use combo, at least in small doses, to enhance their hunting capabilities. Now number two is called hape, and this is a tobacco snuff with herbs and other uh, barks and, and ash, and it's used through the nose, it has nicotine, it is used in many different contexts, but especially for hunting, it is a powerful pick-me-up, we'll call it, that they will use in order to hunt more effectively. Now the grandmother of the Amazon jungle is ayahuasca. This is a DMT-containing plant that is used uh, in many situations. Today in the West, we use it for ceremonies, for healing, and that was definitely uh, one of the use cases in South America. However, there is plenty of evidence of other uses. One of my favorite books is The Wizard of the Upper Amazon. And in this book, in the early 1900s, a Spanish mestizo boy is kidnapped taken into the jungle, and he recounts how the tribe utilized ayahuasca for the purposes of hunting specifically. I'm gonna read a few quotes to give you an idea and specific evidence from him. You must have complete knowledge of the forest to lead the men in vision ceremonies to improve their hunting. Thus, they can eat well and be content. Within a few days of the burial, several of the men came to me and said it was time I led them in a vision session so their hunting skill would come back to normal. It was agreed all around the fire that a honey drinking, or ayahuasca, and vision session in the forest sanctuary was needed to solve Zuri's hunting problem. Without continuing to dump quotes and evidence on you, I think it's safe to say from both the scientific a theoretical and anecdotal perspective, there is evidence to suggest humans utilize psychedelics for hunting. But I do have one major caution. If you're going to be hunting, ensure that you are doing it with guidance and not by yourself. Because psychedelics are powerful mental, psychological, and spiritual tools and a a uh, tool like a gun is often a life or death responsibility. So combining those two, especially for the first time, is not suggested. Number two, set and setting matter. So what is the mindset you have going into it? What is the natural setting or lack thereof if, if, of your psychedelic experience? And this is why having someone you trust is so important to guide you through this process. Now, you can find somebody that you trust, someone who has experience with psychedelics and hunting, but if you do have a desire to uh, participate in the combination of the two, this is something that I facilitate with Sacred Hunting. Just feel free to visit sacredhunting.com, see if it's a good fit for you, see if it's an experience that is calling to you, and if it is, go ahead and fill out an application and I will see you in the wilderness.